Good evening, folks, and welcome to the Horror Corner. I'm your host, Sean Patrick Gershon, and this week we are continuing our celebration of the legendary Halloween franchise. And of course, the 40th anniversary of the original classic from 1970, as directed by John Carpenter, and starring the legendary Jamie Lee Curtis and Donald Pleasance in their iconic roles of Laurie Strode and Dr. Samuel Loomis. And of course, the ever-present threat of Michael Myers. This guy right here, the boogeyman, the shape, the terror of Haddonfield. Michael Myers. So, in our last video, we left off talking about Halloween 6, The Curse of Michael Myers. Uh, so I have here the Blu-ray release of the producer's cut, uh, which is a lot of controversy about as to whether the theatrical cut of the movie is superior to the producer's cut, which for so many years people talked about, oh, this is a much better version, they should have released that version. Uh, because the, the producer's cut uh, shows more of the Donald Pleasance character of Dr. Loomis. That's why I prefer the producer's cut version. Uh, whereas the theatrical cut, Dr. Loomis is kind of just in the background. It's more of almost like a glorified cameo, where he's much more involved in the producer's cut. And uh, especially the ending of the film has uh, Dr. Loomis playing a very important part. Uh, but, and there are several differences in the way of the plot of the film. Uh, I feel like the producer's cut makes a lot more sense with the storyline of the Cult of Thorn. Whereas the theatrical cut, it's kind of all over the place. And of course, at the end, it's just completely thrown away. <laughs> you know, when Michael kills every member of the Thorn cult, and you're wondering, was he actually a part of it, or what? <laughs> Whereas the producer's cut, you actually see Michael standing there with the cult, so you know he is definitely a part of it. And of course, the producer's cut introduced the fact that Michael actually raped Jamie Lloyd, and he is the father of the baby. Uh, which I thought was really kind of interesting, and really make them look evil, even more evil than he was already, you know. Which kind of was interesting. Uh, it's kind of messed, it's very messed up and demented, but... I thought it was kind of interesting. Uh, but at any rate, uh, it's not a great film. The acting is, I think, what kills it. I think it could have been a damn good movie because I think the premise of the film is actually really interesting and cool, but the execution of it wasn't so good because the performances were very wooden and bland and there's no characters that stand out really other than Dr. Loomis. Uh, but it is what it is. I mean, I still enjoy it. I enjoy the producer's cut, though, a lot more than the theatrical version. But that's just my opinion. Uh, some people like a couple of the scenes in the theatrical version and thought those would be... If you threw those in with the producer's cut version, it would make a more solid film all around. And maybe it would. So maybe someday they could infuse the two and make it a more complete film. But you never know. We'll see. <laughs> and of course... After that, they came out with Halloween H2O, which saw the return of Jamie Lee Curtis as Laurie Strode. And uh, this film negated 4, 5, and 6. They felt the storyline had become too confusing and convoluted, so they just wiped those from the storyline. And this one just follows the original and part 2. Uh, so... It kind of seems familiar, doesn't it? Because we got this new film in 2018, which ignores all the sequels except the original. Um, where Halloween H2O ignores 4, 5, and 6. So, <laughs> therein lies the confusing, crazy um, <laughs> timeline of Halloween. There's several different like timelines of the Halloween franchise. It gets pretty confusing. It's got one of the most confusing uh, timelines in any horror franchise. But I still love it because I enjoy so many of the movies, despite the confusing timeline. Which this new film adds to that confusion. 
But at any rate, H2O, I, th I feel, was a solid return to form for the franchise. You had Jamie Lee coming back, and she does a fantastic job as Laurie Strode. And uh, I like the idea that she was kind of changed her name and uh, moved somewhere else with her son. And uh, she was trying to move on with the light, but at the same time, she had a lot of trauma from the events of the original two films. And dealing with the fact uh, that Michael did such a number on her really ruined her life pretty much. Uh, she's forever terrified that Michael might show up at some point. She has visions of him in her nightmares and, you know, I, I like that aspect of it. And I think they might use a little of that in this new film uh, to an extent. But uh, we'll see how that plays out. Uh, but... Yeah, I enjoyed it, but I thought it was a little too much like Scream. It's heavily inspired by Scream and the Scream franchise, which was very popular at that time in the 90s. Uh, so it definitely plays to that aspect uh, big time. And I think that hurts it a little bit. It's too much like Scream and not enough like Halloween. Why is Halloween following some other franchise? Halloween is its own thing, you know? And that's the only part that bothers me. But, however, I do enjoy the third act. I think it's one of the most thrilling third acts in the franchise. It's very uh, thrilling. That final confrontation between Laurie Strode and Michael Myers is just awesome. Uh, so, Halloween H2O. Uh, unfortunately, they had to ruin the whole damn thing by coming up with this one. This abomination of the Halloween franchise. Resurrection. Um, yeah, I just can't stand Resurrection. It's definitely the worst film in the franchise, in my opinion. And a lot of people's opinion, you know. And it's so... Because they did so well with H2O and the way that film ended that they completely negated that by coming out with this film. And uh, they came up with a really silly, almost like Scooby-Doo style way of explaining how Michael Myers survived, you know. How he just uh, uh, dressed up like a paramedic and uh, put his costume on some random dude and he was the one that got his head chopped off by Laurie Strode. So it's kind of a silly way to explain it. It's kind of funny. But at any rate, what did kind of interest me was the fact that he did catch up finally with Laurie Strode and killed her off. So Laurie Strode's character was finally put to an end, and we got to see what was like what Michael would do after that, you know. It's always looming in the background, you know, what happens if Michael does get Laurie, and where does he go from there? And that kind of interests me, what are the possibilities of what he could do after Laurie Strode is killed. But the way they handle it, they just completely drop the ball with this whole reality show storyline. Or with this camera crew going into the Myers house. And it's so cheesy. And it's so dated. Uh, when you, It's like trying to be like Blair Witch Project and stuff. And it just doesn't work. <laughs> and uh, they just really drop the ball in Resurrection. Um, but... Now we're going to talk a little bit about the remake. So because Halloween Resurrection was so bad, they had to completely reboot the franchise. So they came out with the Halloween remake, directed by Rob Zombie. Uh, so Rob Zombie directed the remake, and he also directed the remake sequel, Halloween 2. And... Uh, I'm not the biggest fan of Rob Zombie as a filmmaker. I did enjoy his music. I was a big fan of White Zombie, the heavy metal band. I thought they were awesome. I love La Sex or Sisto Devil Music Volume 1. That's one of my favorite heavy metal albums. But I still feel to this day he hasn't proven himself as a director. I think he has some a unique style about him, but he hasn't been able to quite bring it all together because a lot of his... Uh, dialogue that he writes is really bad, especially in the Halloween films you really notice it. Some of the dialogue is just real trashy and silly and way over the top with the uh, white trash aspect of it, you know, it's kind of like it just doesn't fit in the Halloween franchise and uh, it just doesn't 
feel like a Halloween film. Uh, and uh, even his own films, they, they're they badly written, the dialogue, and I think that hurts it. Like, Devil's Rejects could have been a great movie if the dialogue was better written, if it was written by somebody else. I think if somebody took his style, I think if Rob Zombie directed in his style and had someone else write the dialogue and the script, it could be a good movie, you know? <laughs> and and that, that would find his, uh, he would find his calling there, but... We'll see. I haven't seen that yet, but who knows. But in Halloween, I did like the original Halloween, the remake, where he kind of delved into Michael's past. I did enjoy that aspect of it, even even though they humanized Michael Myers. Uh, he ma They made him more like a real-life serial killer of today, and I kind of find that interesting. Um, but again, the trashy dialogue, the over-the-top violence... It doesn't really fit in a Halloween movie because where the original Halloween, you didn't see that much of the blood and guts, but here it's over the top. It's extremely violent, extremely bloody, extremely gory. Um, it's I mean, it's not even that that I have the problem with. It's more the problem where I hate the dialogue. It's really, and the acting is really campy and cheesy and, and, I, and I hated all of the stuff the cameos, you know, <laughs> like the, there's no need of all these cameos, it's like, oh, there's the guy from Dawn of the Dead, oh, there's the guy from, uh, Devil's Rejects, there's the guy from, uh, you know, why? <laughs> there's no need of it. Uh, it even threw Mickey Dolan's in there from the Monkees, was that necessary? <laughs> it's like random ass cameos. But, I will say, yeah, like I said before, even in the bad ones, the ones I don't like, there are things that I like about them. Like I said, I liked how they delved into Michael's childhood, and I thought that was interesting. Uh, but then Halloween 2 came around, which uh, I really didn't like, you know. Now, there, even in this one, there was a few things that I liked. I liked Danielle Harris coming back. Her performance in the second film, I thought, was a lot better than her take in the first film. I thought she was really good in this one. She was real weathered, she was battle-torn, she was traumatized, and she had a great performance. I loved Daniel Harris in Rob Zombie's Halloween 2. And I also thought Scout Taylor Compton's performance was better in the sequel. Uh, she really annoyed me in the first one. I thought she was such an unworthy Laurie Stroh, but in the second film she kind of redeemed herself. And uh, I also liked Brad Dorif as uh, Sheriff Lee Brackett. I thought he did a good job. Uh, what I don't like is <laughs> Malcolm McDowell's performance as Dr. Loomis. I thought he was okay in the first one, but some of the dialogue when he tries to recite those classic lines really made me cringe, you know. I'm like, ah, just... You just can't do Dr. Loomis like Donald Pleasance. There's just no way. Nobody can do Donald Pleasance like Donald Pleasance. Uh, nobody can do the character of Dr. Loomis the way that he portrayed that character. There's just nobody could ever touch the way he played that character. Never. Um, and Malcolm McDowell does okay in the first one, but in the second one he's awful. And it's not even all his fault, it's just the way that Rob Zombie uh, directed and uh, wrote the character for the sequel. It's just, I hate that the fact that he's like an asshole, the fact that he's a money grubber, the fact that he's just trying to make a quick buck off the events of the, <laughs> the original movie. And the events of Michael Myers and uh, his... Um, dealings with Michael Myers in the Smith's Grove Sanitarium and his whole history with the character. I just hate the fact that he's just an... Uh, it's just an abomination of the character. Dr. Loomis is the hero. He is the Captain Ahab of the Halloween franchise. He's not some jerk trying to make a buck. Come on. That's just an abomination of the character. I couldn't stand that. But I will say I love the beginning part where Michael stalks Laurie in the rain and through the Hatfield Memorial Hospital. That was a nice nod to the original Halloween, too. Uh, I thought that scene was really scary and really well directed. I love the atmosphere of it. Uh, I love the thundering, pouring rain, and you see Michael walking in the rain. 
and uh, he chases Laurie into that uh, that uh, parking booth, and uh, he's walking around the booth, and I love that, and he's smashing it in with the with the axe, and then he finally looks like he's gonna get her, you know. And that part is thrilling. It's scary, of course, until you realize it's just a dream. Ah, I hate that. I thought the movie had a lot of potential to be good, but then. And then they just went off on a tangent. Michael's a hobo now, uh, just <laughs> living like a bum off off dead animals, and it's like I just don't get it. And it looks like a music video, and it's kind of just all over the place. And there's random strip club scenes, and the way he kills certain people, that certain characters that have nothing to do with anything is just all over the place. Um, but like I said, even in the bad ones, there are a few redeeming qualities. Even in the bad ones, and there are, and there's no exception with the Rob Zombie films. But at any rate, that's it for as far as the talking about the franchise and each entry in the franchise. Uh, I also did a ranking of the franchise, so if you guys want to check that out, check out my ranking of the franchise, which at this point hasn't changed. It could change once I see the next Halloween film, this new installment, which is coming out in October. So maybe then I'll do another ranking where maybe we'll throw in the new Halloween. And then uh, and if they have a sequel after that, maybe we'll change it again. <laughs> Who knows? But at any rate, I absolutely love talking about the franchise. I love talking about the original film. I love talking about Halloween 2. I love... Uh, I just love the franchise. I love the character of Michael Myers. Uh, he's my favorite horror icon. Uh, I love the shape, the boogeyman, Michael Myers. And I love John Carpenter as a filmmaker. I love so many of his films, but I think Halloween is the ultimate John Carpenter film. And I just, I'm just so happy to celebrate 40 years of Halloween. Uh, so happy anniversary to Halloween. And I'm so much looking forward to the new film. I'm just frothing at the mouth with excitement and anticipation. And I'm so excited to be a Halloween fan. It's a great time to be a Halloween fan. And thank you guys so much for joining me. Sean Patrick Urshan in the Horror Corner. Tune in and stay scared.